I want my legacy to be that I was consistently good at triathlon, but consistently good at being a good person too. <laughs> On the front is Katie's Zafir, as we've seen so many times before. Katie as an athlete is something that is very rarely seen in terms of how focused someone can be, how prepared they are, and just not leaving any details behind. Katie's mentality is one of pure focus, um, but she has an incredible team around her, um, her coach and her training partners, her family, um, and then everyone that she's come in contact with basically um, has helped her to get where she is. I mean, they've done, they've been so helpful, both my family and Tommy's family. Like I married into an amazing family as well. Like the amount of support and just, how helpful they are for like actual like logistics and things like that and just um but then being at the races and getting to share this journey with them i would definitely wouldn't be where i am without them like neither tommy nor i would be and it wouldn't mean as much without them and i feel like every thing they've done has just shaped who I am and what type of athlete I've become that I feel like I just owe everything to them. I mean, my dad, he drove me out to Colorado Springs when I was first starting triathlon and was going to the Olympic Training Center and about an hour outside of the trip, he, I just started to cry and told him, let's just turn around. Like this is like, it was too scary for me. I wasn't so sure about it. And he's like, just give it a week. Like if you, if you want me to come back, I'll, I'll fly back and then we'll drive back together. And like, I didn't end up ever like calling him again for it, but it just shows like they're so like supportive for me for triathlon, but at the same time, they're not gonna force anything onto me if I'm not enjoying it. So with triathlon, they're the perfect balance of parents where I really wanna do well for them, but at the same time, like I don't feel like my worth is just my athletics. It's me as a person. I kind of happened into triathlon, I guess, because when I was growing up, I wasn't really involved in triathlon. The first triathlon I ever did was with my dad after my senior year in high school, and it was just like a Father's Day triathlon that he just needed a daughter to compete with, and I was the chosen one out of me and my two sisters. So um, I did that race with him annually for a few years, but like nothing serious. I would have considered myself like a swimmer or a runner at that time and definitely not a triathlete, but I went to school for running. I went to university, Syracuse University, and I ran division one there and USA Triathlon. They have the USA Triathlon Collegiate Recruitment Program. And that program basically recruits athletes who run division one and have a background in swimming. And so they identified me as someone who had potential in triathlon. And with that, I was given the opportunity to start triathlon at a higher level and see if I could make it to the Olympics. And I loved it from the start because for me, like I would always get bored running around the track or like swimming, looking at the line all the time. And so with doing triathlon, like it's the three different sports. You always have somewhere to improve. You like, I love the variety in training. I never get bored. And I just, I think if I only did one discipline, it, it I would, just be over it faster. Whereas like, I really just enjoy what I do and I enjoy having that different like variation in everything. In 2019, uh, I crashed in the Tokyo test event and I crashed going straight and just had turned my head for a bit and ended up into the barrier. It was like a silly mistake that I, I do like visualization before my training and races and it's like 
something I've never visualized, like crashing, going straight on a bike, but I did it. And uh, I ended up with, well, a combusted wheel <laughs> because I went into the barrier and then I broke my nose, had 20 some stitches in my mouth because the doctor said that when I hit the barrier, like what can happen is your gums can split on impact. And so my lower gums split from my teeth, like teeth or my lips or whatever. So they sewed those back together. And then I had a few stitches up here, broken nose, and then some impact to my shoulder and my leg. And two and a half weeks later, we had the Lausanne Grand Final in Switzerland, which I'd set myself up like pretty well to win the world championship if as long as I had a solid Lausanne race. So I had to finish, I think it was like 14th or 17th, I can't remember now. When I crashed in Tokyo, I was both feeling defeated because I was like really sad to not have qualified for Tokyo, which was a huge goal of mine. And then also put in jeopardy winning a world championship, which was also one of my biggest goals. And so I think I was lucky in the sense that my body um, recovered over the two and a half weeks. Like my major injuries were of my face, which kind of sucks, but at the same time, that it heals really fast and you can do a lot of training even with your face looking a little messed up. Throughout the, the couple of weeks, like she just took it very easy and kind of built up into it. She had the one of the best races of her life, won the race and won the world championships. So watching her deal with a situation that is probably the hardest situation to deal with as an athlete, uh, having a major crash with major events coming up, um, just bouncing back from that was the most incredible thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Katie started out with doing lots of team sports, but she was always really fast and uh, played hard. She played a lot of team sports, soccer and lacrosse and everything, and then uh, got into running in high school, and that's where she found her, her real talent was. to your house for Easter for a long time. Yeah, remember the pictures? We have all the kids sitting up on the fence in front mm -hmm. of the front house, yeah. Some of the races where uh, she had a race in high school at the state championship and um, she had hurt herself a week before at the conference championship. She had finished well, won it, hurt her ankle, came over you know, and said, uh, I think I might have broke my ankle. And um, a week later, state championship. So she races state championship, she's hurt, doesn't tell anybody you know, that uh, after she came in second by a second okay, at the end of the race. And all the reporters came over to her and, and said, Katie, what happened? You were undefeated all year and you lost at the state championship to a girl she had beat before. And um, Katie said, it wasn't my race, it was Liz's race. You know, Liz had a great race. And uh, I sat there listening to, you know, her humbleness, you know, and not bring up her ankle. And I turned to Mary Lynn and said, I'm not sure I could have done that. You know, that's one of the cool, one of the races that really stands out to me in her younger younger ages. It's just how She's a competitor, but she's humble. And she also that year, I've had people um, from other um, teams come to me that actually were friends of, me, of mine at work and their daughters would race. And they said, do your daughter congratulate every ra racer that comes through the finish line after her? I said, yeah, she does. Because they were just amazed, you know, that she spent the time to shake everyone's hand. So uh, those are some of my, my fondest memories. Oh, 
miss the sunrise. I used to race Katie. She was <laughs> relentless, I'd say. Yeah. yeah, that's a good word. Um, the first time she and I roomed together, it was Cape Town WTS. And I remember seeing you lay out your clothes for your run, like at nighttime when she was going to bed. She laid out her shoes and her clothes and her watch, and I was like, wow, that's so interesting. I, I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> and in the morning, she just put it on and went for her run. And um, that always really stuck with me for some reason. But you bring that kind of organization and intention, right? And planning and forethought into many of your endeavors. Uh, well, the one thing I, I know is that my all my friends will say to me, um, you're so lucky, you know, you should be so proud to have Katie as your granddaughter and have a try person, you know, and I said, well, I'm proud of that, but the proudest thing is she's a good person, really good. And that means more to me than, than the try. <laughs> Let's go check on the chili. <laughs> I'm starving. My mom and dad and like Tommy's parents and aunts and uncles and friends will all come to my races and it just makes it so much more special, especially those races that do go well, is being able to share those moments with them uh, is just an incredible experience. Mm -hmm.